What's up guys? How y'all doing today? Um, got another quick short video, hopefully I'll try to keep this short, uh, about how to use a uh, like microchip programming device with MP Labs and program uh, a uh, chip using the ICSP, which is the in-circuit serial programming uh, method of doing it. Uh, what we'll start with is we're going to start with the project. We need some C code. So I'm going to use MP Labs X uh, IDE. I've, I've gotten to where I really enjoy this. It's based off of the uh, NetBeans IDE. If any of you have ever used that, it's actually a very helpful tool. So I'm going to show how to do it with this today. This is also free, by the way, um, at Microchip's website. If you just go to microchip.com, check out uh, software tools, uh, development tools, they'll, uh, they'll have MP Labs X. So uh, anyway, we're going to go up and create a new project. So we're going to click on our new. We're going to do a standalone project. That's fine. So we'll do next. Now we put in what kind of processor we're going to use. I'm going to do the old Blink project that we had uh, a while back. I'm going to do that one. So uh, that used the PIC 16F 676 uh, microcontroller. So we type that in, hit next. Uh, no, there's no other debugging stuff required, no debug header next. Now here's where you choose your tool. There's hardware tools. I have the ICD3. It's plugged in USB and connected, so the serial number shows up. Um, it also can do the PIC kit 2, the PIC kit 3, PM3, Realize, um, simulators. It can do all that other stuff. And so if you have any other one of these tools, you can. You, it'll just show up once you've uh, connected the tool. So um, we're going to click on the serial number of the one that I'm using, which is the ICD3. Um, we're going to hit next. Now you choose your compiler. Um, I'm going to go ahead and choose CCSC compiler. Hit next. And then, of course, it wants to know where you want to put it. We're just going to call it blank. Um, it's going to put it project folder. It puts everything in a folder, builds a whole folder structure for you and everything. It's kind of nice. I like MP Labs X. And then hit, uh, hit finish. And then that's going to create all that for us. Now, what uh, I got to move the code that we had in our, our original Blink project into our project folder. I, I guess you don't really have to, but I mean, if you're wanting to keep everything in the same place, then it makes it nicer. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull up my folders here, and I've got a folder called Blink Project, and that's where our source file is. Now, I went ahead and created the MP Labs X project file inside of this. So that's where the Blink X folder is, comes from. And if we open it up, you'll see that there's it's created some folder structure for us. What we're going to do is we're going to just copy this. So I'll just do it this way. We're going to copy. And then we're going to paste it in. And so that way now it's all in the same spot. So now if we go back to our MP Labs X, click on Source Files. If we were starting a brand new project, we'd say New, and we put in a new C source file. And uh, that's how we would create our files. The same thing if we had header files, we put in uh, uh, there's a, there is a header file in here. Uh, there it is. C, well, it says C++ header file. There's a C header file. Oh, it's right in front of my face. It's right up top. Okay, so C header file. If you have .h files you want to mess with. But we're going to add an existing item because we already have the code. So we're going to click on our C source. Click select. And then now we should be able to open this up. And there it is. So now we'll double click on it and that should open up our source. So there it is. So there's our source for that. So we've got all of our fuses, all of our stuff, and we're going to basically blink the LED. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to stop the movie here. That's enough of the computer lingo. And we're going to go back to the uh, to an actual breadboard that I've got this stuff set up on, and I'll show you how this, uh, this all gets connected. Okay, guys. Uh, now we're going to take a look at how we're going to actually uh, hook this up. I am using the ICD3. Um, you can use whichever programmer uh, you want for microchip. Um, in fact, I even have, in fact, let me, I'll go get it. Just a second, guys. I actually have another one that if you watch my uh, programming the microchip pick uh, tutorial that's at the very beginning, um, yeah, I showed this one off and name it, but this one um, is from ME Labs. E is an egg. Uh, ME Labs, they sell this guy, and this guy is their <clears throat> U2 programmer because it's a USB, 
It's a USB programmer. It's a standalone. It does not link up to MP Labs. That's that's the only that's the only drawback of it. Um, the, well, that I know of. I mean, I don't know. They may they could have come out with some sort of add-on driver or something for MP Labs X. I don't know. So don't quote me on that. But as I as I know right now, I don't think you can. Uh, program through MP Labs X uh, with this programmer. But what it has, it has what's called a ZIF, which is a zero insertion force uh, connector on it. And what that is, is you just you just drop the chip down in it. In fact, <clears throat> see if I don't have a uh, chip somewhere I can show you. But what you do is you would basically pull your chip out of your board and you would uh, program it. Uh, by taking, you take your chip, you open up the little latch, and then you place your chip in. You have to be careful to make sure and see where pin one is. And I believe this says, see like pin one, eight to 20. So if you have an eight to 20 pin uh, package, pin one goes right there. Whereas this thing's universal. So whereas if it's a, uh, where's that, 28 to 40, I don't know if you can see that, hopefully you can see that, 28 to 40, then pin one is here, it's on the opposite side. So if you have one of them big, uh, 40 pin chips or something or 28 pin kind of like the the 886 you've seen me use the pick 16 f 886 uh, is a big one it goes the other way but anyway you just snap that in and then yeah you'll take and close this down and then it has its own software that resides on your computer and you just click program and it programs it and then once it's done lift it up take it out and then you'll you'll put it into your circuit a little more manual <clears throat> um, a little more if you're if you're doing constant code changes and you're debugging and whatnot it kind of can be a little cumbersome because you're constantly you know you're constantly pulling it out and putting it back in pulling out your chip and putting it back into your circuit all the time <clears throat> so it can be a little cumbersome to do that however there are things i can't remember what these are called there are things like these that are made that they're like a little clip but if you can see uh, hopefully you can see that maybe you can see it maybe you can't i don't know um they have little uh teeth on them and what those are if i can pull this off is there that brings the, your pins up to here and i the, the one that i have even comes with a, a ribbon cable and as you can see it's it looks like a chip so to speak of course these are kind of bent up but what you can do is take and so that way you don't have to remove your chip all the time you can take this hold on open this up put this in now you gotta be careful which which one's pin one but um, you take this and put this in your ZIF to where it's in there. And then what you'll do is you'll take this, like I said, make sure you be sure which one is pin one. And then what you do is you clip this around the chip like that. And then now you can program it while it where it sets and you don't have to uh, you don't have to worry about um, uh, you don't have to worry about it like having to take it in and out all the time. So, but if you don't have one of the if you don't have one of these cables, then you have to take it in and out with this type of programmer. What we're going to do though is we are going to look at uh, using the ICD and how to how to hook it up. <clears throat> so, how to hook it up is the the easiest way that I found is you need to find a six pin um, telephone cable. Is the easiest one I can find uh, like this. This is uh, this has got an RJ11 on it, as the standard size is, or um, a, a six-pin RJ45 will still work uh, for it too. It'll be the right size, but it needs to be uh, six-pin, okay? Um, and a lot of times the RJ11s will be the same shape and size and have the pin locations, but they won't have the actual pins. They'll only have two because for a standard telephone, standard analog telephone, you only need the two. So, but what you need is you need the six one, the one that has six pins in it. And what I did was buy, buy one that's cheap. Don't get something that's expensive because you're going to have to, you know, cut it up. And so what I did was the other end, you know, here's, here's one end. The other end, I cut the end of it off and stripped out the wires that are in it. Okay. Now, I don't know if you guys are going to be able to see this. I'm going to try to get it as close as I possibly can. But down in there, it goes, at least on this type, this connector, when you're looking at it this way with the, with the spring part facing down, pin 1 is on the left. Okay, So this is pin 1, and then it goes to 6. Pin 6 is white on mine. I don't know if you can see that, but it's white on mine. So down here at this end... 
this is pin 6. So that means pin 1 is over here, and actually that's that little blue one I cut it off. Pin 1 on these ICDs is used for low voltage programming, or the LVP option. I, I don't really do it. I don't do the low voltage programming uh, feature. I've, I've never done that. Um, never really had a need to do it. So I just trim that guy off. But if you want that feature, if you're, you're doing that due to whatever application you're doing, then you'll want to bring that pin out too. But that's actually pin one right there. I just cut it off. So we start at two, three, four, five, and six. Okay. Now, a great thing is these, these usually programmers come with these, these awesome posters that are like all folded up. The great thing about them is they give you the pinouts that tells you where everything goes. So one says it goes to MemClear, one says it goes to VDD, and the other says it goes to ground. And then you've got your program data, <clears throat> excuse me, you got program data, which is PGD, program clock, which is PGC because it's a serial connection. And then you've got this uh, this PGM, this program pin, that's that low voltage program pin, is that number one. And like I said, I don't use it, so basically ours is going to be not connected. Alright, so now I'm going to jump back to the computer and show you guys where this program uh, clock and program data is on the, uh, on the actual processor via its data sheet. Okay guys, we're back on the, on the PC here. We're going to look up the data sheet for the PIC16F676. So we can uh, so we can check out where the program data and program clock is. So you're gonna go up here on Microchips website to the search data sheets, pick 16F676, hit enter. Uh, let's see what it comes up with. There it is, and then data sheet. We're gonna click on it, and then that gives us our data sheet. Okay. So we're gonna scroll on down here to the whoops, there it is, to the pin diagram. Okay. I'm gonna zoom in here so you guys can see it. Okay, all right, so we got our pin diagram. Now, what, we, what we're going to do is uh, we want to connect this to the ICSP DAT for data. That's the serial data. And then ICSP clock is where you're going to uh, be connecting for your main, the actual main programming. You're going to connect your data, your clock. You're also going to connect it to MemClear, which is right here, your VPP MemClear, and also to VDD and VSS. Um, if this, I don't think this processor supports it, but the low voltage programming, uh, I think, well, no, I think it does. I think it's here. Well, maybe not. I don't think this processor supports low voltage programming. I don't know. I'd have to, I'd have to look at it again. It's been a while since I've used this one. I'd have to look at it. But um, if a processor supports the low voltage programming, it should have a pin, I think, marked LVP, which is low voltage programming, for that uh, pin number one uh, should, should go there of your, of your ICD. Uh, at least the ICD that I have goes there. But anyway, but those are your main ones that you're going to want to use is uh, this ICSP DAT, ICSP clock, and then your MemClear pin, and then your power and ground. And that's basically all you got to do to to set up your uh, set up your set up your connector that connects to it. So okay, so that probably does it for this section. We're going to go back to the uh, to the actual breadboard, and we'll uh, we'll see how to actually uh, hook all that up and plug it all in where it all goes. So we'll see you there. Okay guys, we're back on this. So um, here we go. We're going to go ahead and connect this up. So the first one, or at least pin number six, needs to go to MemClear. So what we're going to do is we're going to take pin number six, connect it to pin four because that's MemClear. And then we're going to go so on and so forth. Pin five, then goes to, where's pin 5 go to? Goes to VDD. So I'm going to take and put my little reference material right here. Because I can never remember where everything goes. <laughs> Let's see if I can zoom in a little bit. Alright, see if I can get this to work here. Okay. So we got that. Alright, so next one, pin number 5. It's going to go to VDD. And four goes to ground. Of course, this is the tricky part of this is that you, you got to plug it in and keep it plugged in. So I'm going to go ahead and hook this up. Um, there's no sense you guys watching me fumble around trying to hook this up. So I'm going to go ahead and hook this up and we'll come back when it's all put together and I'll show you what it looks like. Okay, guys, now we got it all, we got it all hooked up here. Uh, That's what it looks like. Zoom in right here. <clears throat> so we've got our... See if I find something to point with. Hey, I got a toothpick. This will work. All right. 
So we've got our mem clear hooked up on pin four. One, two, three, four. So there's mem clear. We've got uh, VDD, which is our plus five volts, and our VSS, which is our uh, negative. And then here's our program data and program clock. And then, like I said, we're not hooking up the low voltage. So now that we have that hooked up, back up a little bit. Now we have this hooked up. Time for our ICD. We're going to take our cable and very simply in the side of it we just plug it in so that's all you have to do now we'll go back to the computer and we'll end up programming it okay guys we're back on the PC one last time to program this uh, software to it now that we've got it all hooked up and ready to go we're gonna go ahead and program it so what we need to do to program it first off you want to make sure um, <clears throat> some ICDs uh, and I can't remember where you uh, do it at in MP Labs X but some of them you can set it, set them up to where they will uh, oh let's see I, in fact let me just show you uh, let's see if I can do it I think it's in uh, project configuration so it's under run set project configuration customize you go to whichever one you're using which me mine's the ICD3 so you click on it um, I think you can choose power okay so here's a, an option that says power target circuit from ICD3 you can uh, depending on your circuit now you want to keep track of how much current your circuit pulls because remember it's connecting the VDD and VSS lines so if there's other circuitry that can pull a whole lot of power I can't remember there's a spec for the ICDs that tells you how much power it can current it can actually uh, source um, make sure you don't you know that you don't draw too much current from the the ICD so um, on your VDD and VSS pins because it's going to other things besides just the chip. But you can check mark this and it will actually provide five volts. Yeah, it's, you can select your voltage level, whether it's five volts or you can select the three, three um, or a range of voltage levels that it'll produce for you. So that way you don't have to have your, your project powered uh, basically to program it. It can just be the raw board and you plug it in and program it. For us, ours is all breadboarded up so we can put power to it so make sure so basically my suggestion is for what we're gonna do make sure your boards powered up um, and everything's hooked up and on and you should get a the status light on the uh, the ICD or your programming device should uh, illuminate so signifying that it's got power and everything's ready to go and if that's all true then all you got to do is basically hit program this is make and program device so it'll build the code uh, one more time and then uh, program it. I think there's a couple options. There's program for debugging too. There you go. So you can do you can run your debugs, run stack traces. We'll probably I'll probably do a video maybe at some point on how to do debugging. But as of right now, we're just going to program it. So we're going to hit the button over here in my output window. We're going to see that the build is successful. It's going to open up a new window for the ICD. It's going to tell you basically as a warning. You know, make sure this tool can only accept. You know. Selecting a 5 volt device with a 3.3 device connected can result in damage to the device. So it's your little warning. It's saying if your voltage levels aren't correct, you know, you could damage something. Which ours are. Ours are fine. We're 5 volt. Everything's okay. So we hit OK. Taking a minute. It reads the device ID, which is great. And then it programs it. And then program verify complete. So that should mean everything is complete and ready, ready to go and programmed. And actually right now I can see that it is blinking. So we're gonna jump back over and I'll show you that and we should be, we should be through. Okay guys, as you can see, it's nice and blinking. So that's basically how you set it up. Uh, plug it all in and plug it into the ICD and then you hit program in the software and basically sends it to it and there you go, we got our LED blinking. So. Anyway, hopefully this helps a lot of you. Uh, hopefully this didn't get on too long. Uh, I'll have to see how long it turns out. But anyway, this is basically how you connect uh, one of the programming tools and use it in your programming projects. All right, guys, that will do it for this video. Take care, like, subscribe, share. i uh, got some new stuff coming up. I'm kind of taking a break since we had the Raspberry Pi uh, series. Uh, but I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to put together some other stuff once I get it all put together. We'll be spinning out an entire uh, another set of videos on uh, embedded web servers, which ought to be pretty cool. So take care, guys. Talk to you later. And that ought to do it.